Hello, today I'm going to talk about ambiguous antecedents. First, let's review what an antecedent is. As stated in the 2003 edition of the Chicago Manual of Style, an antecedent is the word, phrase, or clause to which a pronoun refers, understood by the context in the sentence. As a reminder, a pronoun is a substitute for a noun. So it refers to a person, place, thing, feeling, etc., but does not refer to it by its name. Examples of pronouns include it and they. Antecedents are helpful in avoiding repetition. Instead of saying, I wore my USF shirt because my USF shirt was just washed, you can say, I wore my USF shirt because it was just washed. The pronoun it clearly refers to the antecedent, my USF shirt. Now that we have reviewed antecedents, let's make sure we understand what it means to be ambiguous. Merriam-Webster defines ambiguous as doubtful or uncertain, especially from obscurity or indistinctness, and also as capable of being understood in two or more possible senses or ways. Now here is a quick example of an ambiguous piece of art. Some people look at it and see a rabbit, while others look at it and see a duck. As the definition states, it is capable of being understood or seen in two or more ways. Now, let's put the two together. An ambiguous antecedent occurs when a pronoun has two or more possible antecedents. This basically defeats the purpose of pronouns and antecedents because a pronoun is supposed to clearly refer to one antecedent. This is important to know and recognize because ambiguous antecedents cause writing to be unclear and oftentimes misunderstood. Bear with me, I know this is a lot of information. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Have you ever found yourself rereading a sentence because you came across a word such as it and could not tell which of two or more things it referred to? Or worse, are you guilty of using ambiguous antecedents in your own writing? Not to worry. Now let's look at some examples of ambiguous antecedents so you can recognize them and make sure that you do not accidentally include them in your own writing. Example one. My room has a bed, desk, closet, and fish tank. It is painted green. Do you see the problem here? Your fish tank is painted green? Huh? How do you see the fish inside? Or your bed is painted green? That's kind of weird. The pronoun it could refer to room, bed, desk, closet, or fish tank. But it's okay, because there are several ways to easily fix this. One way of fixing this is simply by repeating the antecedent, my room. So the sentence would be, my room has a bed, desk, closet, and fish tank. My room is painted green. Now the sentences are clear, but it's a little repetitive. Another way of doing this is combining the two sentences and saying, my room, painted green, has a bed, desk, closet, and fish tank. And now you have a clear sentence. These are just two examples. The most important thing to remember is that your writing needs to be clear. Let's look at one more example. This happens to be a real life example that was found on a public sign in a park. If you look at the picture, uh, the sign says, if your dog does a poo, please put it in a litter bin. Notice the dog in the trash can. We've got another case of ambiguous antecedents. The problem here is that the pronoun it could refer to either dog or poo. In order to fix this and make it clear, the sign could instead say, 
If your dog does a poo, please put the poo in the litter bin. This way, people aren't throwing away their pets for relieving themselves. That's not very nice. As a side note, and since this is a lesson involving grammar, let's take notice that the P and please on the sign should be lowercase, and there should also be a comma after the first poo in the sentence. This city could really use some help proofreading its signs. Now let's review what we have learned. Ambiguous antecedents are a common grammatical error involving pronouns and their antecedents. An ambiguous antecedent occurs when a pronoun has two or more possible antecedents. You want to avoid this in your writing because ambiguous antecedents can make your writing unclear and confusing. Here are a few tips to help you avoid using ambiguous antecedents. First, Reread your document. Pay close attention to each pronoun to ensure that it refers to only one antecedent. Also, to, cor to correct an ambiguous antecedent, remove the pronoun, shorten the sentence, or rearrange sentence elements. You may need to do all three. I hope you found the presentation useful and it will help you to avoid using ambiguous antecedents in your writing.